five years since the first bone was discovered in the West Mesa serial killer's burial ground. It has been 13 years since the West Mesa murder case was uncovered. A single bone found on the West Mesa. Police continue to investigate the notorious West Mesa murders today, releasing pictures of two women who could help them solve this case. The 13-year search for the West Mesa Bone Collector. In February 2022, 11 different heartbroken families stood in front of Harold Medina, the chief of the Albuquerque police, silently praying for answers to questions that had been left unresolved for over a decade. On this day, Medina stood in front of these families and the press, attempting to commemorate their losses and pain solemnly claiming that 13 years is a long time to wait for justice. This day marked the 13th anniversary of the West Mesa discovery, a horrifying case of a serial killer who went by the name of the West Mesa Bone Collector, and in what would become one of the most mysterious serial killer crimes in American history. This story begins in February of 2009, when a woman named Christine Ross was walking her dog in the West Mesa desert. This particular area of West Mesa was a suburban neighborhood in the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and was considered a pleasant, family-filled area, with children out playing in most yards. Their walk started out normal, like any other they had been on that week, until she came across a 100-acre open lot that had been cleared for the construction of some new homes. Ross decided to let her dog run around off his leash, and he quickly began to act excitedly about something he found buried in the earth. Thinking it was likely an old dog toy left by another pet owner, Ross walked over to inspect his findings. To her horror, Ross soon realized her dog had dug up what appeared to be a human bone. Ross knew that she couldn't truly decipher what kind of animal the bone came from, but had a growing suspicion that she had uncovered something sinister. Ross's sister was a registered nurse at a local hospital, and so she thought it would be a good idea to get her sister's opinion on it. Ross sent her sister a photo of the bone, and to her dismay, her sister soon confirmed that the bone was human, and likely part of someone's femur. Ross immediately called the Albuquerque police, and when they arrived, they soon dug up what everyone would later find out to be a mass grave right under the very lot Ross had been walking her dog on. This mass burial ground ended up containing 11 bodies total, all belonging to missing young women from around the area. Because the bodies were reduced to nothing but bones, DNA testing was used by Albuquerque's forensic team to identify the woman. It took the medical examiners nearly a full year to identify the victims. An investigator named Ida Lopez had been working on the cases of several missing women in the area. All these missing women had a few common factors. All were young women under the age of 32. 10 out of the 11 women were of Hispanic descent, all came from disadvantaged backgrounds, and were likely involved in drug usage and sex work, and all were reported missing between the years of 2001 and 2006. The West Mesa graves ended up being home to the decomposed remains of two teenagers and nine adults. 26-year-old Victoria Chavez was the first skeleton to be identified in the mass grave. Chavez was friends with three of the other victims found, 23-year-old Juliet Nato, 32-year-old Cinnamon Elks, and 22-year-old Gina Michelle Valdez. All three are thought to have been murdered around the same time. Forensics later determined that Valdez had been four months pregnant at the time of her death, which unofficially raised the death count of these murders to a total of 12. 21-year-old Monica Candelaria was soon after identified as another victim. The first found victim Chavez and Candelaria were the only two victims with a previous conviction on record for sex work. The youngest of these women was Jamie Barella, a 15-year-old who went missing alongside her 23-year-old cousin, Evelyn Salazar. Barella was the only victim who was not known to be related to drug usage or sex work, and their families claim that the two girls vanished shortly after going to a local Albuquerque park for a walk. 24-year-old Virginia Cloven was another victim who had run away from home after her brother had also been a victim of homicide. 
Cloven had a history of mental health issues and lived alone in a trailer before she disappeared. Celania Edwards, another 15-year-old victim, was the only victim with an out-of-state origin, and because of this, authorities suspected she may have been a sex worker who worked along an interstate corridor that would have brought her to the West Mesa area. Edwards was the only victim of African-American descent, a characteristic that stood her apart from the rest. A 27-year-old victim by the name of Doreen Marquez was a mother of two young children when she disappeared. Marquez's family reported that she had been a drug addict and had left her children in the care of her mother shortly before she disappeared. 27-year-old Veronica Romero was the final identified victim of the West Mesa mass grave. Every lead that the police found themselves on was soon turned to a dead end, and every suspect they were suspicious of was cleared. Investigators realized just how easily the serial killer seemed to vanish into thin air, often long before any of their victims were found. In 2009, the FBI set out a $100,000 reward for anyone who could provide substantial information on the case and the killer's whereabouts. However, the reward has gone uncollected for over a decade now, turning this case into the most horrific and mysterious case that Albuquerque and likely all of New Mexico has ever encountered. In 2004, the police discovered a satellite photo taken of the site that showed tire tracks leading directly to and from the graves. However, because construction development had begun, all traces of this evidence that may have been left behind had already vanished, leaving the police at a loss for leads once again. There were two main suspects that came under suspicion after the discovery of the 11 buried skeletons in West Mesa. A man named Joseph Blea was a main suspect by not only the Albuquerque police, but also his friends and family due to a history of repeatedly stalking sex workers in the area. Blea was also imprisoned when the bodies were found after his ex-wife contacted the police saying she was suspicious of him. Blea's DNA had been found on the body of a dead prostitute. However, it was unrelated to the West Mesa case. His cellmate told police that Blea even admitted to knowing one of the victims of the West Mesa murders and claimed he had hired her before. However, a lack of evidence meant that Blea could not be convicted of the murders and, despite his seemingly likely involvement in the case, nothing came of this suspect. Blea is now serving a 90-year sentence for committing several sexual assaults that remain unrelated to the West Mesa murders. Another man named Lorenzo Montoya was identified as an individual in the area with a violent history. Montoya's ex-girlfriend once told local authorities that he threatened to kill her and bury her alive. In 2006, Montoya raped and strangled a prostitute to death. Montoya had died that same year, having been murdered himself by the boyfriend of the prostitute he killed. Montoya fit the description of the West Mesa serial killer. However, not enough evidence was present to convict him since he had already passed away before the case unfolded. Since the first mass discovery that was initiated by Ross back in 2009, eight more female skeletons have been found in Albuquerque, all reported missing between 2005 and 2006, all once again with a reported history of drug use and sex work. Many believe these victims may be connected to the initial 11 skeletons found and likely murdered by the same serial killer. However, no more evidence has been found to link the cases. In 2016, Detective Mark Morani was the only sole detective left working on the case. Morani has interviewed over 200 local women who have similar backgrounds to the victims and has attempted to create an accurate timeline for every suspected murder. This has helped in eliminating many of them in some way. Because of all of the victims' involvement with sex work, the police were unable to collect many details on the circumstances of each victim's disappearance. Since sex workers are often left in incredibly vulnerable situations without the protection of the law, many workers find themselves as easy targets for violence and crime, and authorities believe that this is the reason that the West Mesa Bone Collector has gotten away with the murders, even to this day. 
A popular theory was suggested by University of Mexico criminology professor Dirk Gibson, who believes that the West Mesa bone collector was likely what he calls a commercial serial killer who would offer to kill women for other individuals in return for monetary compensation. This would explain the motive behind such a high number of serial killings. Because of the nature of the case and the lack of a convicted suspect 13 years later, controversy over the police's incentive has been sparked. Many believe that because most of the victims were involved in sex work, the locals don't relate much to the victims and even believe them to be criminals themselves. This fact, along with a tight budget for the Albuquerque Police Department, has caused many individuals to believe that the police lack incentive to find the true killer and are not putting as much effort into the case considering the high volume of killings involved. The West Mesa Task Force is a team committed to finding and prosecuting the West Mesa Bone Collector. The team has been investigating leads for the past 13 years and the last tips given to the team were in 2018. However, they produced no substantial results. Because of this, the West Mesa Bone Collector still roams free to this day. So there you have it. Has the Albuquerque police done their due diligence in finding the West Mesa Bone Collector? Do you think the stigma around sex workers is truly affecting the outcome of this case? Or is this just an incredibly skilled and calculated serial killer on the loose? Let us know in the comments below. If you appreciated this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more true crime coverage. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next video.